as white people, we are, are we guilty of the sins of our forefathers? No, I don't think so. But are we responsible for them? Yes, I believe we are. And I guess that I've come to realize that when we talk about solutions to a systemic racism, police reform, workplace diversity, affirmative action, better access to health care, even reparations, it's not about guilt. It's not about pointing fingers or passing blame. It's about responsibility. It's about understanding that when we've said the word equality for generations, what we really meant was equality for a certain group of people. It's about understanding that when we've said the word inequality for generations, what we really meant is slavery and its aftermath, in which we is still being felt today. It's about understanding on a fundamental level that black people and white people, they still have it different in America and that those differences come from an ugly, ugly history, not some random, uh, not some random divide. And it is about understanding that black lives matter and movements like it matter because, well, let's face it. I probably would have been safe on that street that one night in New York. And Thabo wasn't. And I was safe on the court that one night in Utah. But Russell wasn't. But as disgraceful, disgraceful is, is, as that is, we have to deal with racist hecklers in the NBA arena who in 2019, the truth is, you could argue that that kind of racism is easier to deal with because at least in those cases, in those cases, the racism is loud and clear. There's no ambiguity, not in the act itself, at least, and thankfully not in the response. We throw the guy out the building, we ban him for life, and there we go, we fix the issue with him. But in many ways, the more dangerous forms of racism isn't that loud and stupid. It isn't the kind that announces itself when it walks into the arena. It's the quiet and subtle kind. The kind that almost hides itself in plain view. It's the person who does and says all the right things in public. They're perfectly friendly when they meet a person of color and very polite. But in private, well, they sort of wish that everyone would stop making everything about race all the time. <laughs> wow. It's the kind of racism that can almost be that that can seem almost invisible, which one is one of the main reasons why it is allowed to persist. And so again, banning the white guy like that Russ is heckler, well, to me, that's the easy part. But if we're really going to make a difference as a league, as a community, as a country on this issue, it's like I said, I just think we need to push ourselves another step, another step further. First, by identifying the less visible, less obvious behavior as what it is, racism. Then second, by denouncing that racism actively on every level. That's the bare minimum of where we have to go with this. I think that we're going to consider the NBA or any other workplace as anything close to part of the solution in 2019, and that's what has to happen. I'll wrap this up in a minute. But first, I have one last thought. The NBA is over 75% players of color. 75%. People, black people, they built this league. 
they grown this league. People of color have made this league into what it is today. And I guess I just wanted to say that if you can't find it in your heart to support them, after all this, I mean, you actively support them? If the best you can do for their cause is to pass it, tolerate it, if that's the standard that we're going to hold ourselves to, to blend in and opt out, well, that's got good enough. It's not even close. I know I'm in a strange position. As one of the more recognized white players in the NBA, it's a position that comes with a lot of, well, interesting undertones. And it's a position that makes me a symbol for a lot of things, for a lot of people. Often people who don't know anything about me. Usually I just ignore them, but this doesn't feel like it. Uh, a usual moment. This feels like a moment to draw the line in the sand. I believe what's happening to people today of color in this country right now in 2019 is wrong. And the fact that Americans are more than five times as likely to be incarcerated as white Americans, that's wrong. The fact that black Americans are more twice as likely to live in poverty as white Americans, that's wrong. The fact that black unemployment rates nationally are double that of overall unemployment rates for whites is wrong. The fact that the black in imprisonment rates for drug charges are almost six times higher nationally than white imprisonment rates for drug charges, that's wrong. The fact that that black Americans own approximately one-tenth of the wealth that white America own is wrong. The fact that inequality is built so deeply into so many of our trusted institutions is wrong. And I believe that it is the responsibility of anyone on the privileged end of those inequities to help and to start making things right.